This is the plaintiff, Kenneth Tackett. He says he gave a good faith deposit to the defendant on the house he was selling, and unexpectedly the bank backed out on giving him the loan. The defendant was unsympathetic to his situation, to say the least, refuses to return his $1,000, so he's suing. This is the defendant, Steve Heights. He says the plaintiff failed to mention to anyone that he was going through a divorce. His loan was denied, and now he's trying to back out of the deal they had. <laughs> he's sorry, but the plaintiff's personal problems aren't his to worry about. Deposits aren't refundable, and he owes the guy nothing. He's accused of having no heart. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dog, the plaintiff put a deposit down in a house he wanted. The bank turned him down, and now the seller won't give him the money back. But the seller says the guy was shady from the get-go. It's the case of a loan again, naturally. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, Kenneth Tackett? Yes. You are suing Steve Heights? That's correct. For the return of your $1,000 good faith deposit that you had placed when you were going to buy Mr. Heights's home. Correct. All right, tell me what happened. Um, I moved to New York, was looking for housing. I'd actually already found a place to rent um, when I was approached by a, a real estate agent and loan officer um, offering me pretty much a guaranteed loan through the USDA loan program. Decided, so, you know, they went ahead and they got me supposedly pre-approved for a loan. Um, they knew I was going through a divorce, that um, the divorce wasn't finalized yet. They said that wouldn't be an issue, you know, everything would be fine. So I decided on Mr. Heinz's house, uh, made him an offer, had the home inspected, um, pretty much everything I thought was ready to go. They even gave me a closing date on November 21st. And they being? The, the um, loan officer. Okay. Um, and then on November 19th, they told me that they weren't going to be able to get the loan approved. Why? Because uh, I did not have a final settlement agreement from my divorce yet. I mean, we have a verbal settlement agreement in place. Yeah, but, that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what's the delay in your divorce? Who's the lady with you there? Uh, my girlfriend. Oh, but well, she'd like to know too. What's the delay in the divorce? <laughs> no, she knows. Uh, Michigan, Wayne County, Michigan is just notoriously slow. It's one of the slowest in the country. Now, when did you first find out that there was a problem? You put the house up for sale and he enters into a contract to buy it when? Um, around October. All right, and then the closing date was when? I never really got a definite closing date on it, but it's but around sometime November to the 1st of December. Okay, and when do you find out that there's a problem? Like, uh, it was around, like, towards the end of November. Do you have a letter from MB Financial saying we're denying you and this is why? I do not, no. They never sent me one. And then how the, are you going to be able... They, you have to they, be able to prove to me that it was right. through no fault of your own that the loan didn't go through. How are you going to prove that to me here? That's the only way you can get that... that it's, how much is a deposit? $1,000. Right. $1, he feels he's entitled to it because he's kept the house off the market for two months. But you're only entitled to it if it's fault of his own. You're not entitled to it if it's no fault of his own. Did you ever see anything in writing? No, I have not. Where is the actual $1,000 is where in escrow with your... Realtor. Realtor. That right there. Let's see. It just says the buyer's not obtained you know, an accepted mortgage. Um, I actually was approved for an FHA mortgage, but I had told them all along that I did not have the money for a down payment for an FHA mortgage, that it had to only be a USDA mortgage. How much money would you have had to put down for an FHA mortgage? Uh, what is that now? About 10%, I think, they acquired down, so about $6,500 probably. And how much money were you putting down in this other... With the USDA mortgage, um, you only have... I think I would only need less than $2,000. Well, are we heading into the same place we were in 2008? Man, this is a bad idea, not a good idea. The bad part is the monthly payment actually is cheaper than what I pay in rent now, so... Exactly. Well, this was the commitment, I said... Provide them all the documents that they ever asked for. Nowhere in the commitment does it say anything about a settlement agreement from the divorce. They told me that they had everything that they required. Yeah, I know. I yeah, everything them. you're yeah. talking to me about is all you and your, you know, shady... <laughs> well, I, I personally... <laughs> These people blame... who are doing this to you yeah, I, and I saying, why rent when you can own? I'll get your... All More that stuff. Anything, what does that have but... to do with him? The guy took the, the thing off the market for two months. Like, I understand, you may have a cause of action against the people who told you the divorce would be no problem. So at the end of the day, yeah, you might have to go for a more conventional kind of mortgage where you have to pony up more, and then you have to buy the house. Because that, whatever, whatever, you know, unicorns and rainbows these people were selling you didn't work out. There's a surprise. So if the bank turns you down, can you get your deposit back? No. Really? No. Seems unfair or kind of harsh. 
It's okay. <laughs> what do you say? I agree, no. I don't think they should be able to. Even if you knew going in that you had to get a loan? Yeah, I mean, it all depends, but in my opinion, they shouldn't. Okay, we'll talk later. Go inside the card room. The way your contract reads is, you get the deposit back if the closing doesn't happen through no fault of the buyer. Okay, what could po that possibly mean? There's a hurricane and the house blows down. There's a fire and the house burns down. Uh, the seller decides, I'm not selling it to you. And you know what? I'm sick of you and I'm keeping your deposit. That's through no fault of your own. Um, but you don't have a financing contingency, which lots of home sale contracts do, that says, if I don't get the mortgage, I don't have to close and that's not my fault. You have a fine, the only contingency you have is that you get a mortgage commitment letter, which was met. The minute that you got the letter, this, the minute these guys gave you this mortgage commitment letter, that contingency was met. So really, it was not expeditious for you to go through with the sale. I don't even know if he let you out of it. Did you end up signing that document and letting him out of it or? No, we had a, like a counter offer for him to sign. And, and what happened? It. He never signed it. Yeah, I haven't signed oh, it yet. Oh, that's, okay, that's not good. You need to get this little issue resolved. See, you have a problem between you and that banker and their whatever right, well, practices. They, they told me this was the first step that I had to start here. Yeah, was, here's where him. this step ends. I rule against you and in his favor. Okay. And here's why. Because there is nothing that you have described to me that is not your fault. And when I say your fault, fault of the buyer, okay, I mean these are your people misinforming you, not his people misinforming you. It's you chose some mortgage broker who's promising you the world, and then as it turns out, he wasn't able to get you the world. That is, you know, I know it's not, I, I, I believe every word you're saying. You were up front with them from the beginning. I'm going to believe every word you're saying, all right? But the fact is, you chose that guy. That's nothing that has to do with him. He didn't do anything to create this problem. And you did have a way out. It was just not a good way out, which is to apply for regular financing. So no, I find that the $1,000 deposit stays in the hands of the seller based on your contract and the fact that he took it off the market for that long. Good luck, folks. This is not good news for the plaintiff who joins us in the hallway right here. What's your reaction? Um, it's pretty much what I expected. So like they said, this was just a first stop. What is going on out there in the mortgage uh, market again? Uh, you see, just, you know, are your red people, flag is people trying to get what, I guess, you know, trying to shove people into a house as quickly as they can, get a quick commission. Get them into mortgages as quickly as possible. Does that remind you of another scenario maybe about uh, eight years ago or so? Yeah, pretty close. You know what happened there? I was a part of it. Yeah, you're starring in the big short right <laughs> now uh, on the wrong end of the deal. Yeah, okay. All right, head right down this way. And, uh, all right, so step on in here, and um, what, what do you make of this? Do you see the same thing that everyone else is talking about here in this case? Not really. I made every effort to make it right with him, even after he kind of bailed out on me, so and he never signed the paperwork or did it what he, he should have done. So, You think he was a little bit naive going into this deal? It's not my call. No. It's not my decision to what make. Do you, what do you see here? You're on the other end. Do uh, you, you see uh, history repeating itself here? An echo? Not with me. You see an echo? <laughs> All right. Harvey, what about you? I don't know, Kurt. It could easily happen. I gotta tell you, if you are buying a house, you need a lawyer to look through every single document.